Hey, it's Jake Mace with Phoenix Longevity Arts. We're gonna talk about chain whip. In the chain whip, a lot of you have been asking me in the comments to show a couple of the spins that I do, and I'm gonna teach you these spins right now. The first spin you guys wanted to see was how to roll with the chain whip safely and yet keep the whip spinning. So I'm gonna show you two different methods of rolling with the whip. First is have the whip going in a helicopter pattern over the head. And on my right hand has the whip, I'm gonna roll with my right shoulder. So when I have the whip going this way, I roll the whip first on the ground, so it's on my left side. Then my right shoulder tumbles over the whip, and I roll through, and I keep the whip going over my head this way. And then I just stand up. And it really helps to go fast. <laughs> okay, so again, we're gonna go over the head helicopter style. And we're gonna spin the whip first, roll over my right shoulder second. So whip, roll, keep it going this way, and then stand up. All right, don't think too much into it. If you become mechanical, it's gonna look forced. I want you guys to just look at what I'm doing and copy me, okay? Let's do it full speed. Our second spin is gonna be how to spin the whip like it's a staff, okay? So we're gonna take our whip, we're gonna hold it and make it into three parts. We have a left part, a center part, and a right part. Okay, so these three parts are very important that they're equal distant. We're gonna just take it like this, and if you go to our previous video about how to spin the rattan staff, it's gonna show you number four spin, and basically we're gonna do number four spin with the chain whip, but the key is to have enough confidence to just go for it, because if you spin it slowly and uncoordinated, it's gonna fold on itself and hit you in the head. And so if you spin it confidently with a good amount of speed, either moderate to very fast, the centrifugal force of the whip will keep it in an open manner. So when I first learned chain whip, I wore a helmet and a mouthpiece, and I'd recommend you guys do the same thing. But I've been doing it now for over a decade, so I'm just gonna go for it without that stuff. So we have it this way, and I'm just going to begin doing my number four spin with the right hand going over the top first. So my right hand right here. So over the top and go for it. And I'm just going to let it flow, and I'm gonna be confident in my movement. I'm never going to stop the movement, and I'm gonna let the whip, the gravity on the whip, keep it in an open position. If I turn for you guys, so you can see it from the side. The dart of this whip is really seriously sharp, pointy, and heavy, and the handle, the handle's you gotta worry about because the handle is a super heavy chunk of metal. And I've seen the handle do more damage to people's head and face than the actual dart. And that's it, just keep the shoulders down, keep the stance rooted, and try to do about 50 spins, building your confidence, and then kill. This chain whip is kind of just like an old practice one. The handle looks kind of like this, with a ghetto looking piece of white trash tape on there. And then the other, and is the dart, the dart is pretty seriously big. This one's hit the ground a few times, so it's kind of gotten um, mushroomed up. But no joke, this is a solid, heavy duty chain whip, not one of those small wushu ones, so this is pretty heavy. The second spin, like a staff, is number two staff spin. This one's more difficult. And the way I do this one is I hold the whip in the middle, and I have to be aware that the whip has a different weight toward the handle than it does toward the dart. So I'm gonna let the handle, the heavier side, be one link shorter than the dart. Do you guys see that? So when I'm performing this as part of a set, I've demoed this form in China, the United States, Mongolia, and you have to be aware of which link is longer during a choreographed sequence with the whip. So I'm trying to get the dart one link longer than the handle, and that's gonna pretty much uh, balance out the different weights of the different sides. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna just begin trying to make both sides of the whip spin 
in a number two staff spin manner at the same time. See how I got them together? If your whip's doing this, you're gonna have a lot of problems. So let it be still, calm yourself, keep the inner demons at bay, and just start smoothly making the whip go side to side. Then, it's very important that the pinky leads the way. So my pinky begins to lead. So now the pinky is the dart. So the dart is going to be what's leading. And then I do a little flick of my wrist, added with the arm motion, and the flick of the wrist on each side opens the two sides up just like this. And allows them to spin as close to opposite ends of the circles I can get. I'm trying to make the chain whip almost a full on 180 degrees. And so I have handled or I have dark handle, dark handle, dark handle. And I can hear the metal whip whizzing past my ears. And it just takes going to a park. Enjoying the whip, getting hit in the head a bunch of times, and eventually you'll become successful one time, then two times, then every time. And it's quite a arm workout as well. So, dark whip, dark whip. This is Jake Mace. I'll see you next time and have fun with your chain whip, trying to be as safe as possible. <laughs>